to Risky Fitness. We are deep in the throes of the 2020 COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, and I am doing some quarantine gaming. I'm sure you're doing the same. I hope it's going well. I hope you're home, you're safe, you have everything you need, you haven't run out of toilet paper. I'm going to ask you to please excuse the background noise as I am presently doing laundry. But uh, as you know, if you've been following my channel, I'm doing RPG retrospectives, and I would be very remiss if I didn't revisit the Dragon Quest series. Having grown up in the US, my first exposure to the series was Dragon Warrior, the official NES localization of the original Dragon Quest. Now, I won't be spending a lot of time on this game because quite frankly, I don't like it. That's not to say I don't like the Dragon Quest series as a whole, it's not my favorite, but I do like it. I think once it moved to the 16-bit era, it improved a lot. But these old Dragon Quest games are just a chore to play, even by the standards of the NES era. Dragon Warrior was released in the United States in 1986, and it looks and feels like it. I was five years old when this game came out. If you're enjoying my content, please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this video on your favorite social media, blog, or whatever you got. Help me get the word out, get some more views, and get a larger audience coming in to watch these videos. Thank you very much. Now, the most glaring thing about this title for me, apart from the incredibly slow gameplay, is this really bizarre localization. I may never understand why the choice was made to translate this from Japanese into really bad early modern English. Like Shakespeare written by somebody who doesn't understand how Shakespeare wrote. I suppose this was meant to make it feel more like Middle Ages-y, but there are a lot of problems with that, apart from the fact that it makes the game kind of difficult to follow and a little annoying. It also has nothing at all to do with the Middle Ages. This kind of English most likely became standard in the 16th century, and even then it was generally reserved for the theater. Normal people didn't speak this way. And hey look, I have to use this English degree that I have for something. If nothing else, I'll use it to talk about how video games got English wrong. Of course, if Enix really wanted to localize the game with language that made sense in the Middle Ages, Middle English would be more appropriate, but that would be impossible for anyone to understand unless they specifically studied medieval literature. If you don't know what I mean when I talk about Middle English, then go ahead and hop on YouTube and look for a reading of the Canterbury Tales in the original Middle English. You probably won't understand a word of it because it's not English, as you and I know it today. The English degree, gotta use it for something. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, right. So, while Dragon Quest slash Warrior kicked off one of the largest and most successful franchises in video game history, it is tedious to play it. Doing anything, from talking to an NPC, opening a treasure, or even climbing stairs requires navigating a menu and selecting a command. Why can't it just be the A button like every other RPG and be intuitive enough to know what I'm trying to do based on what's in front of me. Obviously, if I'm standing in front of an NPC, I want to talk to them. I don't want to open them or climb them. If that's not enough, saving in this game requires going back to the castle and speaking to the king every single time. Not only does this often mean trekking through the wilderness and fighting dozens of random battles in first person against enemies that live in teeny tiny little windows, but also risking death and losing all of your progress entirely. There's no fast travel either. There's no pirate ship, there's no airship, it's just you, alone, on foot, walking. Luckily, the world map is relatively small. Still, no shortcuts at all mean it's a really long walk home. Luckily for you, your hero is a bit of a hybrid. He has no particular class, but he can wield swords and he can wear heavy armor. He also has some spells. He can heal himself and damage enemies as well. The gameplay here is extremely basic. There's no in-game map. There are no tooltips in the shops to tell you what you're buying. Your only stats are HP, power, agility, magic points, and defense. And you just learn magic spells as you gain experience levels. That's really all there is to it. You don't even equip your items. You just buy it and then it's automatically equipped. It's weird. You will wade through towns and caves following the clues given by NPCs to collect Erdrick's three treasures and eventually defeat the evil dragon lord and restore peace to the kingdom. In the official localization, the NPCs don't tell you anything useful most of the time. 
Along the way, you'll use torches to light up the dungeons, which are all dark by default, but it only lights up like 9 squares at a time, so searching through the dungeons and caves is just a nightmare. You also sometimes have to find items hidden in towns or on the world map, which require using the search command on a specific pixel. Without a guide, it's headache inducing, and with a guide, it's still really frustrating. This is also a very grind heavy game, so you'll need a lot of patience to get through it. For some bizarre and unknown reason, the localization also changed the names of all the towns and dungeons. They sound nothing like what they did in the original. Dragon Warrior is definitely not one of my favorites. I played it when I was very young, I didn't really get it. This time I'm playing it as an adult, and it is just painful. On the other hand, Dragon Warrior did give us the uh, the slime enemy. They're adorable, they're so cute, so I guess I can't be too angry with it. There's a much better 16-bit remake that came out for the Super Famicom a few years later, and I'll be covering that version in a future episode. All this having been said, I know I had no kind words about Dragon Warrior. It did kick off one of the most successful role-playing game franchises in history. In Japan, I think it's actually bigger than Final Fantasy. So, obviously, I'm probably a member of a very small group that still feels this way about the original game. I think it probably has a lot to do with since 1986. It's been 34 years. I've played a lot of better games in that time. So, for its historical value and what it gives us, what it gives the world of role-playing games, it deserves its merit. It deserves its praise for that. But as it stands right now, as a game to play during a pandemic, <laughs> I can't recommend it. So what are your thoughts on the original Dragon Warrior? Sound off in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe in order to help Risky Business grow. Thank you very much if you listened to this video, watched it all the way through. Thank you Super Ultra very much if you are a subscriber. If you give me a like, a comment, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you share this in your favorite blog, social media, whatever you got, thank you once again. Until next time, Game over.